Yep, you guessed it. We've overclocked the Ryzen build, so there's only one thing that we can do. Let's see how much overclocking we can squeeze out of it. So 1700, rock solid at 3.8 gigahertz. Sitting pretty at a voltage, core voltage of 1.36 volts. What's interesting about that is I definitely set that to 1.35 volts. So there's some kind of load line calibration setting within the BIOS that needs tweaking. Something's allowing that voltage just to, just to creep up a smidge. Okay, at 1.35 volts, but if we're starting to get up to 1.4 volts and stuff like that, we could start to have some problems. And whilst not the world's longest stability test, 26 minutes, absolutely no problems. That's pretty rock solid. I'm pretty pleased with that. Most tech tubers, YouTubers that have had 1800Xs have really been hitting a ceiling at four or 4.1. I know Jay's two cents got his to 4.1 underwater. So we're at 3.8. That was really easy to dial in. The only settings that I've tweaked in BIOS are the voltage and the CPU speed itself. So let's have a little looky and see if we can squeeze a bit more out of her. So let's see if we can step on our rock solid 3.8 gigahertz overclock. So we're at 1.35 volts, but coming out at 1.36. There most definitely are load line calibration settings. If we go in here, uh, you can see there's a whole load of settings here. I'm going to leave these on for auto just for now, but there is an opportunity to come back and look at those later on. We're not so high on the voltage that I'm getting overly concerned. It's only 0.01 volt drift up. So I'm actually going to put that in at, I'm actually going to go in at 1.38 or 1.375, nearest voltage it can support. And we'll dial that in. 3.9 gigahertz f10 out and let's see if we get a post keyboards come on that's a good sign it's a bit dark in here I've not got my lighting in here at the moment so it's a it's a little bit tricky oh, oh. sweet we've got a post we get into windows Yes, we can. Not bad, not bad. Let me just check that my overclock has gone in. No reason to think that it wouldn't. So that is dialed in. So 3.9 gigahertz. Let's get a stress test going. Test, test started up, okay, so far so good. I have found pretty dramatic crashes, if I'm honest, when I've started Ada 64, but that, that seems okay. So we've got voltage, wow. 1.392, right, so that's, at uh, wobbling around a bit there, 1.384, 1.392. That's wobbling around, so that's that's substantially higher than the 1.37 volts. So we are going to have to have a little tweak with the load line calibration, I think, in a second. But on the surface of it, that appears stable. CPU sitting at 63. 
three degrees, which is more than acceptable. We'll leave that running for a little bit and see how she does. Oh, <laughs> she's crashed. She's crashed. Gave that the kiss of death. Okay, need to dial a little bit more voltage in. Okie dokie, back in the BIOS. No, there is no overclock on the memory at all at the moment. This is just straight CPU overclocking, but we have only tweaked the speed and the voltage at this point. So the mouse is superly sensitive in the BIOS. Press the plus button, so just creep that up ever so slightly. Didn't feel like we were a million miles away from a stable overclock, so let's not go mad and introduce bucket loads of heat. I think there's still plenty of headroom on this CPU. There's plenty of people underwater that are running their, their Ryzen CPUs at uh, 1.4 volts. AMD recommend no more than 1.35, but that's of course under the Wraith air cooler. So back into Windows. All of that boot looking stable. I could do this with some sort of screen capture software, but if I'm honest with you guys, I'm being lazy and I can't be asked. Doing this a bit handheldy style. Okay, system stability test, dismiss that. It's good, even with a full system crash. Ada64 knows it's had a problem. Kick that off. Okay, test has started up. Let's see if it can last a bit longer than it did the last time. That voltage, if you just take a look, is 1.4. Bang on the money. Uh, power, no voltage, so 1.4, that's, that's not fluctuating at all, so 0.02 volt higher than we set it, but that's okay, and temperature still 63, ah, there we go, there's the crash, there's the crash, we're not a million miles off, guys, nailed it. Five minutes into a stability test, which we are running at 3.9 gigahertz. And, oh, should talk about the voltage. So I, so I bunked that up to 1.4 volts in BIOS again. We still haven't played around with the load line calibration. That's, that's coming out at 1.416, both in CPU Z and ADA64. Four, no fluctuation which is good still sitting at 63 to 64 degrees which again I think is pretty reasonable five six minutes into it now we'll leave this going for 20 minutes if that passes after 20 minutes then we'll have a go we'll have a go at 4 gigahertz guys I still think there's plenty of headroom in this CPU for a 1700 substantially cheaper than an 1800x almost now running on all cores at what the 1800x is rated to boost one individual core to and already exceeding the 1700x it's good value for money guys it's good value for money Better. 3.9 gigahertz, 1.416 volts technically, albeit set to 1.4 on the motherboard, ran for 27 minutes. Rock solid, no problem, no errors, and then just spectacularly the whole system crashed. I've seen on some other TechTuber videos that, that Ryzen doesn't seem to have a it doesn't have a subtle crash there's no blue screens of death here there is nothing but hard system stops uh, and no error codes or debugs at all and actually this motherboard which was the msi carbon pro gaming 
doesn't actually come up and tell you if you've got a bad overclock and I have got the latest BIOS on this which is a little bit disappointing but not to be deterred we're at 3.9 gigahertz 27 minutes so we're not a million miles away from a stable overclock so I think what we're going to do now is we're going to crank it up another step and if we can get a 4 gigahertz that's pretty good given that most people with 1800 X's which is substantially more expensive are only hitting 4 or 4.1 so the baby brother the 1700 that's no x by the way punching well above its weight granted it's on water but even if we had this underwater we'd probably only be hitting 4 or 4.1 jay's two cents done a couple of videos on overclocking ryzen cpus and i think at best hit 4.1 and that was at some crazy voltage so let's get ourselves to 4.1 and see how we do. Uh, four first. <laughs> Fraudulent slip. You can see I'm determined to get to 4.1. The reality of what you get with overclocking is diminishing returns, as with all things, including water cooling. The very small incremental increases that we'll now get in CPU speed will be equally accompanied by spectacularly huge leaps in the core voltage but we're not quite ready to stop yet so we're at 3900 megahertz or 3.9 gigahertz and we're doing that at a core voltage of 1.4 albeit that's boosting to 1.416 so if we take rule of thumb 0.02 increase well, plus 1.4125, 1.425. Okay, so that's going to take us to 1.45. That's getting a little bit toasty. There we go. That's been running 35 minutes. Rock stable solid. 3.9 gigahertz. I think that's probably enough of that. Let's get some Cinebench scores. run off she goes all in real time We've got 1640. Pretty respectable. There we go. 1640 at 3.9 gigahertz. Certainly no slouch. Outperforming AMD's 1800X as it was advertised at their launch. That was scoring around the 1600 mark. So 40 points clear of that also significantly outperforming the 6900k at stock which is more than three times the cost of this cpu now clearly my 6900k overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz was coming in around about the 1740 mark but for a third of the cost at only 100 points less than cinebench that's truly truly impressive and guys 
This thing is whisper quiet. So there we go, guys. A really kind of random, semi-vloggy, semi-educational video. Uh, as always, I hope you're really well wherever in the world you are. Please like and share this video. And I'll see you in my next one.